Hey, it's me, Ivy Ann. I haven't done a video in a while, and um, I wanted to catch up with you and kind of let you know what's going on with me. Um, I'm working on a lot of things. I obviously I work a day job. Um, trying as hard as I can with my comedy. Um, it's not going very good, of course. Anybody that's ever tried with comedy knows that if you're struggling to make it as a comedian, <laughs> congratulations, you're there. Um, uh, I'm working on my book right now still. I have a lot of editing to do. I have a deadline looming, and I don't think I'm going to make it, but it is what it is. It'll turn out in the end, I'm sure. The book's already written, so I'm not worried about that. And like I said, I'm working a day job. Um, that's going, so. I don't want to talk about that right now. Um, I'm not really going to talk about trans issues or anything. Um, I'm going to talk more about something that's very important to me right now. And I was thinking about it when I went through this. I was like, oh my god, I'm totally going to make a video about it. <sighs> and then I was like, well, maybe... But the more I thought about it, I was like, I want to, I want to talk about it. And I got a little something in the mail. This right here is what encouraged me to do this video. I almost didn't do this. I almost let the feeling pass me by because I was really euphoric yesterday when I got home. Oh my gosh, I was on such a high. I went through a very long, well, not too long, but I went through a long, rough work day, and yet I was like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, and I wanted to do the, I wanted to make the video off of that high, but there's two reasons why I did it. One reason why is I wanted to enjoy that high for myself, and two, I, that high didn't feel genuine for a video. You know what I mean? It's just like, oh, that, that high was fun after I accomplished something, but do the video when you mellow out and you'll you'll get a little more realization and truer expectations. And and that that kind of solidified this morning and I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm past that little honeymoon phase of my accomplishment. Um and then this came in the mail. I think it probably came yesterday or something, but I saw it on my kitchen table this morning and I was just like, who wrote me? It's got my name on it. I almost made the mistake earlier of like flashing my address and I was like, well, that's a bad idea. Um, so it's got my name and then nobody's, nobody else's like the sender's name isn't on there. And I was like, who is this? So I'm going to talk about this in a second. So, I I love to I love to do photography. I love video. You know, I I love looking pretty and like and it's not just like oh I have to make myself so pretty. No, it's when I do makeup or hair or something, it's to bring something out that's already there. Um, a lot of people confuse like makeup with like covering up or hiding something and that is not true at all um it's to bring out a look or a feature at least in me it is maybe maybe not the case with other people maybe they're trying to conceal something like freckles or whatever i i, I don't care in me it's to bring out something that's already there and i believe that is actually an important trans issue but i don't believe it's exclusively to trans people I think a lot of people experience that. Um, so when I do my eyebrows or foundation or concealer, it's to it's to basically make a blank slate, um, cover up the cover up any blemishes or discoloration on my skin, make it more smooth and even tone. It basically it's it's like leveling out and zoning the ground um, so that you can put out a good foundation. And build a house and like and then you build it up from there and people coming by can see the architecture and what goes on on the outside 
definitely is a reflection of, hey, this is probably what's going on on the inside. That's sometimes the case, most of the time the case for me. So I like to to do that. And I also like to explore things. Um, I love hiking mountains. I grew up in the Cascades in Washington myself, Washington State. Um, that's where this girl's from. <laughs> Born in Olympia, raised out in the Cascade foothills. That's me. And um, I also like to explore, like, in here, though. There's a lot in here. And I need to find the ways and opportunities to do that. And that's a big trans issue, although it is a, a much bigger issue for, um, excuse me, I'm quite issues, a much bigger issue that encompasses like a whole tent full of, of, of things for different people. But I can also narrow it down to trans issues and my personal, my personal issues as well. Excuse me. Um, because it prevents me from being marginalized. Like if I just said, I was like, yeah, you know, I really, I think it's healthy for me or other trans people to find like avenues and outlets, excuse me. And um, in Portland, this happens a lot. It could happen anywhere. Um, but I experienced this a lot in Portland. Um, especially if I'm talking to someone that's LGBTQ, which typically everybody says they are. I'll say like, hey, yeah, you know, as a trans person, you know, and I'm speaking from experience, like, you, it's, I need to explore different areas of myself and find different outlets to focus on things on the typical LGBTQ person will be like, oh, well, everybody does. And that marginalization attitude, I'll be honest, that really sets me off. It pisses me the fuck off. And I'm like, gonna lose my fucking shit right here. And I was like, there's gonna be a big fucking body count on the evening news. But I'm not a violent person. I'm a total pacifist. I don't, I don't like violence whatsoever. And there's hair everywhere. I don't know if you can see it, but lots of hair. Um, but it's one of the, it's that attitude that really sets me off. And because I believe so firmly in the idea of finding those outlets. And what are some of those outlets for me? Well, I mentioned work. Work for me is something that like, I like to be productive. I like to always be doing something. Um, so I've got that covered and it brings in finances. So that balances itself out. Excuse me. Hold on. I'm sorry. I had to do this. Like my nose isn't running, but my nose is like cold. Did you, you ever feel this where like the end of your nose just gets cold? It's like, I don't want to touch my nose, but it's just cold. Okay, that's better. I think it's just getting cold in the room, and now I'm touching the outside of my nose, not picking my nose. <laughs> There's literally nothing there. It's just my nose is, is like cold like a dog's nose. Um, like I said, I have my, my work. I have my, I have, I have, you know, okay, so I'll count on my hand. I have work. I have my comic book. I have my book. I've got my personal things, um, love and relationships. That's, that's this one that's way over here. <laughs> don't know what the fuck it is. Okay. That is a, something for another time. Excuse me. My nose is just cold. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is so weird. There's like nothing wrong with my nose other than it's just like cold. Maybe there's like a ghost in my room. I feel... Where are you? I'm right here. Hiding right in front of you. Maybe I'll get lucky and I'll get the ghost that'll give me a blowjob. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> um, so I've got my outlets, but there's got to be more than that. And so I, uh, I was on Facebook um, because I'm involved in a lot of Portland groups and things throughout uh, the Portland area on Facebook. And one of them popped up that says, um, I said they were looking for, for women over the age of 30. And I'm, I've, over the years, I have applied to quite a few of those. 
Um, COVID was a really hard time because pfft, nothing. You couldn't get nothing. Um, but since then, in the last year, you know, things have recovered to a point now. Um, since a lot of mandates ended almost a year ago. That, um, <laughs> my cold nose. Oh my goodness. My nose is a dog nose. <laughs> Um, and so I, I've applied to a lot of them over the last year or so because I'm, I am a woman. I'm a trans woman. I, a lot, some transgenders will not say that they're a woman. Some will just say they're a trans woman. I will say I am a woman because it's, it's not what you are. It's who you are and it's lived in. And that's the important part. And I've lived as a woman myself for many years now. So it's nothing new to me. Uh, it's been a progress and a journey. So I can say I'm a woman. I can define it further and say that woman I say I am is in fact a trans woman. So, um, but it's all a lived in experience. So, um, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, I saw an opportunity from a, from a studio to apply, and so I filled out their application, didn't think much of it, um, because a lot of them will be like, you know, here's back to that, back full circle to that, you know, to that issue um, in Portland, um, where the LGBTQ say, oh, we, every, we're inclusive, we we want you in here. We believe in you. We want you here. Okay. We'll get you in here. Okay. I'm like, you're like, okay. You, you, they're like, we, we want people of all kinds. We're looking specifically for women. And I'm like, okay, well, yeah, I'll, I'll apply. And they're like, oh, oh, you're that kind of woman. Oh yeah. Well, see, we're, we're all kind of booked right now. Okay. Like I've gotten that a lot in Portland, Oregon. Okay. Portland, Oregon is not a city of diversity. It's a land of fucking goddamn hypocrites, okay? Period. And that's my bench making that noise. <laughs> Better be careful. Um, so I applied and I didn't think much of it. And actually a few days later, um, I got like a message or a phone call or a text or something. I'd have to go back and look it up specifically. Um, and even though it was, it, here's the thing, it was just a few days ago and already I'm like, wait, how did they contact me again? Because that flash became a big blur for me. And this is why I wanted to share this. Um, the studio contacted me on probably about Wednesday or so, um, middle of my work week. So probably that's why it's so foggy because comic books, editing, um, hectic work schedule, you know, um, coffee shop I start my days around 1 or 2 a.m. brewing coffee very very early so they contacted me and um they wanted to get me in the studio like right away and I'm like hmm okay I was like this is weird I was like well this is this is really tight because they're like Eight o'clock on a Saturday morning is what they wanted me to do. And that was, that was yesterday. And today, today is, today is today. Why won't my things? Okay. So it's Sunday, February 5th today. So Saturday, February 4th at 8 AM, they wanted me to do my, my photo shoot. And I keep messing up this word and I don't know why, because I am, I am a cunning linguist. Okay. I'm a cunning linguist. All right. Uh, <laughs> Boudoir. I'm sorry, this is I keep messing up on it. Um It's terrible. I should have a much better dialect um than that. Um they want to get me in at eight on, on Saturday morning, and I'm like, guys, I I work early Saturday, okay. Um I you know, gotta be on the clock. You're going to be on the clock. You can't be late for work. You know, if you're late for work, you're going to get fired or something like that. You know, those weird voices I hear in my head. Um, and, but they were very persistent. I was like, hey, can we try the next day or we go out further? The studio wouldn't budge. And that was the very, very 
very, um, I don't know, I really felt pressured. And then um, I was like, hmm, but they, they want, I applied and they want me, but they were kind of, you know, I'll admit, I did, I did feel pressured. I did. I did feel pressure on it. And because this is something new for me, I felt uncomfortable. I really did. Um, I don't know how it is working with a lot of other photographers and studios, but I can imagine in the photography world and any type of, of modeling or photo shoots or anything, I could imagine there's a whole lot of pressure. And I've heard of this too, where well, you lose a lot of your own time and your freedom when you do these things, especially if it's one that is like, you got to look a certain way and do this and that. And then if you don't, you're fired. I'm not going to go there because that's not the sphere that I'm in here. I'm in here. That's all this out here. Don't worry about it. Um, so I was like, okay, I was like, and they're like, it's going to be like 45 minutes. And I was like, okay, well, that should give me enough time to, to be able to leave there and get to work. They let me know where the studio is and I let them know where my, my work is. And I'm like, actually, it's like really, really close, which worked out good because, um, Portland's not a massive area, but it's still, still generally big. Um, you know, by a number of miles, um, and stuff like that. And Saturday morning traffic's not bad unless somebody decides to fuck it up and crash. There goes my nose again. I'm sorry. I'm not picking my nose. It's just, it's cold. So I have to keep rubbing it. I don't know. Um, so I, I, I agreed and, um, and then they're like, okay, well, we're going to invite you into the Facebook group. Um, so I was like, okay. Um, so I, I joined their Facebook group. They invited me and it looks like they invite people in, in groups, um, you know, or waves, I, I guess, because I really didn't meet any of the other people that were coming in. And so I was like, okay, so I'm like, hi, um, I'm Ivy Ann and I've really never done any of this before. Um, I introduced myself as transgender because I don't, I don't feel that's something that, um, I need to conceal. I feel like that's something I want to say about myself um, because it answers a lot of people's questions that might otherwise feel uncomfortable asking. And um, I posted a few photos of myself that I've shared on the internet of literally exactly where I have my phone right now recording me. I literally would like just took picture, the pictures from this exact spot and I, I shared those. Um, I got a really good reception. Um, from other people in the group. Um, and that was very, very warming. Um, because I kind of don't know, I didn't know at the time really what I was, I was kind of getting myself into. I'm someone that I have, I'm extremely comfortable in my body, which is what gender dysphoria has really been tough on me with is, um, Comfort, comfortability, um, relaxation, um, because I, I have no problem taking my clothes off. I don't, I love it. I, I know I am beautiful. Sometimes I don't feel it. Sometimes I don't think it, but I do know that I am very pretty. Um, I'm not wearing any foundation or makeup. I did my brows. Um, this is me just on an average day and I'm almost 42 years old. Okay. <laughs> I'm transgender. Um, I haven't had any top surgery. I haven't had any bottom surgery. I have no problem saying that I haven't had any facial feminization. Um, nothing done. I haven't had any electrolysis. This is just all normal me. The only change I ever made was taking hormones and those helped so much. <laughs> there we go. Um, so I, I think that's a point to, to mention that. And it's not to be like, well, I'm transgender. No, it's just like, Hey, um, this is my background. This is where I'm coming from. I'm transgender. And to do a photo shoot, to be welcomed in, to do one, um, is a huge, huge step for me. A huge, a huge step. Because um, you really don't see a lot of guys stepping forward for photo shoots. It's definitely something that's geared more towards um, 
a female field, which is which is fine. I believe anybody can do what they want to do. And for me, this is this was a personal thing I was going to have to to overcome and um, take on because I did. I did photography when I was a teenager. I had my photos done for senior year in high school at um, Jones Photography in Aberdeen, Washington, um, when that studio was still around. Um, I know the old man and his sons were still running it back then. I remember meeting them. They had such a beautiful studio, with so many historical pictures, and they have like a library or a catalog of these photos online. Um, Jones Photography. Hopefully I'll remember to put them in the link below um, and you'll check it out. Um, when I did this, I think I was like 18 years old. Um, it was my senior year in high school and I was just about to graduate and the photographer, uh, the guy running Jones Photography, uh, he liked my photos and he asked if my my senior picture could be used for his advertisement in the South Shore Mall in Aberdeen, Washington. And I was like, yeah, absolutely, of course. And that was like 1999. Oh, I miss that year. Um, and so even a few years later, I think up until like 2003, when they did some renovations there, my senior pictures were still advertising Jones Photography um, in like those like triangle, like kiosks and malls. I don't know if really malls have those anymore, a lot of them. But, you know, they're like, advertise your business here. And um, and so I was featured on there. And years later, people I would meet in Aberdeen, um, I would mention um, that was my picture on there. And they would go, oh, that was you? And I was like, yes, that was me. I was a teenager. Um, and although I was representing very differently at that time, it was the end of the 90s, I was getting ready to go into my 20s and the 2000s, um, I was still very attractive. I was still, I can say that about myself. I look back at pictures of myself from back then and I'm like, oh, look at you. But I remember feeling something else underneath that doesn't show in any of those pictures. But I still look at myself on the outside as if it's someone I've never met. And I'm like, oh, look, they're so cute. So I have that background experience. But the year's 2023 now. Um, <laughs> and some time has gone on since 1999. And I've never done anything like that since then um, because of a lot of gender dysphoria issues. <laughs> Back full circle. And so let me grab a drink of water. And so, um, so I realized like this is something that I have wanted to do for so long, but I've wanted to do it as me. And that opportunity, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do this because it empowers myself to say, look what you did. Look what, look what you took the steps. You've taken all the steps to get to this point and you did it. You got here and it's a beautiful thing. And now my bra, <laughs> bra's tickling me. Okay. So I took the steps to get there. And so, um, Friday night, um, before I went to bed, I packed, um, oh, it's supposed to be over here. But anyways, I packed my suitcase um, known as Big Pink. Um, actually, I want to go grab Big Pink. I want to bring Big Pink in here. Let's go get her. Come on. There's Big Pink. He's a big fucking suitcase. This is Big Pink. And so I grabbed all my hosiery and everything. And I threw it all... Um, inside Big Pink here. And she's a big bitch. Um, I got this for my birthday last year um, from a gentleman. He sent me an Amazon gift card. And inside Big Pink came a smaller suitcase. And in that smaller suitcase was two little travel bags. And Big Pink, she, she's my hefty girl. I take her when I have to go, like, not very far. She's definitely not an airplane one. 
Um, but if I have to throw something in the car, I throw my stuff in Big Pink and I take her with me. And she's got a name. Her name is Big Pink. And the other suitcase, the smaller one, that's Little Pink. Um, so I I gathered up all the laundry because they, they called me on the phone. I talked to them, obviously. Um, we did questionnaire stuff by email. And they, they asked me some things and I was very open with them. And I let them know, I'm like, hey, I'm very comfortable with my body, obviously. I haven't had bottom surgery yet or anything done down there. So I don't really reveal any of that, but top, everything, I'm like super okay with, with all of that. I really am. If you know me, like, <laughs> um, I'm super comfortable. So, and being in a photography session, you get to explore that comfortability because I'm comfortable, but I'll get to it. So I did the questionnaire, everything. So 4 a.m. Saturday morning, um, I got up, I showered, I did my hair, did my makeup, and then I was out the door by seven o'clock. So that was about a, th about a three hour period of, of hair and makeup. Um, and even then my hair wasn't even fully dry and I didn't want to blow dry it because that that has a different effect on it and I didn't want that. So I dried as much as I could and then I literally just just twisted it up and then put a put a clamp on the back. And um, I stopped by my work and grabbed some coffee and then I headed to the studio and at eight o'clock um, they let me in. And this was on the the lower like southeast corner. Well, not too southeast because then you're going to get over to like further Milwaukee and then like over to Clackamas and there's goes my cold nose again <laughs> and then um so this is this is kind of just South Portland I think like Selwood area would be a good description um let's go closer if you like maybe we'll go like that so um so in the studio I got to take a look and it's absolutely beautiful um I'll share some pictures online later, probably. Um, probably on one of my Instagrams. Um, IVN Unplugged probably will be the one I'll probably share it on. Um, if you're interested to see. Um, I won't name the studio. I don't want to name them. I just don't feel comfortable doing that. Unless I have to give them credit for something. Um, so time came for the photo shoot and they wanted me to pick a bunch of outfits and stuff like that. So in big pink, um, I threw a bunch of stuff together here. Come on the camera. With me, pink. So I threw a bunch of stuff in here cause I, I really wasn't sure because I've never taken like direction in like a photo photo shoot like this before. So, um, So they're like, okay, you know, go ahead, show me your outfits and stuff like that. So I was already wearing one. Um, they wanted me to pick like two more. Um, I picked uh, my green lingerie top, one that um, has been, I've been seen many times in pictures. I wore it in Vegas. It's terrific. Uh, it covers the boobs, but it's entirely see-through and gives you real natural form. I really like that. And then um, I think one of my emerald green dresses and the photographer wasn't too hot on that one because it wasn't very lingerie. They're like, oh, we can get a couple pictures in the end with that. And I was like, you know what? That's fine. I was actually like, you know what? Cool. Because I didn't have any sense of direction um, going in. I just knew I wanted to do this. Um, so... So, um, we just kind of got started and, um, I, you know, um, the photographer was, was a gal. Um, her name is Lynette. Um, she was very polite. Um, very, very, very good. She wasn't pushy. Um, that's one thing that I've always been concerned about is getting a photographer that doesn't understand you, um, or treat you good and gets kind of pushy and kind of hurts your feelings stuff. I never had a single moment like that with Lynette and um, she was so kind to me um, and she welcomed me in and the biggest part was that because she did that I was able to like welcome myself 
into feeling comfortable in the studio. And um, it was such a wonderful feeling. I've, I've been welcomed places and by people, but when you let yourself in there and let yourself unwind and unravel everything that's twisted up inside you and going on, and realize like you just have this moment to do what you want to do, you experience um, growth, you experience joy, happiness, you and a multitude of emotions um, that come forth and that kind of thing um, is what I was looking for. That's what I was looking for is, is just that ex expulsion of everything that you, that you or you or I keep inside. Um, we all do. Um, but it was, it was that release and this was the, the way to do it. And it felt like, it felt like that. And I wanted to unwind more. Obviously I'm very comfortable about my body and everything like that, but I wanted to unwind a lot more, but I was, I was hesitant at first because the photographer was very, very polite. And so I kind of felt like, oh, well, I don't want to start, you know, taking my clothes off if they don't want me to. I was actually kind of feeling very modest on the inside, even though on the outside, I probably didn't look at, um, but you know, it, it, it was that kind of feeling that, you know, like when, you, maybe when you're younger and you're on like a date with, with somebody and you know what I mean? When, you know, some of the early days of exploring emotions in your body, when you're on a date with somebody and you reach over and you, you kind of touch their, their hand a little and they don't pull away. It's like, okay, it's, it's not a no, but it's not a yes either. Like what's going on? And then, you know, you kind of, kind of go like that with their hand, like they don't pull away. You're like, okay. So as we were going along with the photo session, you know, obviously it was really good communication. Um, I began to kind of dress my, dress my part. And, and I did ask at first, you know, I was like, do you mind if I, do you mind if I take this off? Um, they said, sure. I was like, okay, I didn't want to ruin continuity or photos or anything. Cause that was a concern of mine was that it was going to be, um, I was like, oh shoot, they're taking pictures. If I take this off, is it going to ruin what they're looking for? And, uh, Lynette said no, which was, which was great. And I was like, okay, cool. So, you know, I, I removed my, my, my stocking and garter, you know, I, you know, slowly began to remove, you know, pieces of my clothing as we went to the photo shoot and I began to feel a little more free. Um, you know, I, I dropped my top, which felt really good because I was like, it was very freeing. And like, that gets me like, oh my gosh, like, it's not that like I'm exposing myself, but it's just that I'm letting unwind the, the apprehension of like, of covering up and like insecurity. I let go my insecurities and was just like, I'm going to be me. And somebody's looking at me the whole time. Somebody's taking pictures. And I was standing in front of, you know, like windows overlooking the street and it was kind of a rainy cloudy um saturday morning in portland um but the light underneath the clouds coming through was was actually pretty bright and so i had no problem just like literally like sh you know obviously i was down to my skin but it was like shedding my skin it was shedding that shell and that's that is something that i had wanted to do excuse me i'm getting so excited here talking about this and this was 100% the perfect situation and opportunity to be able to do this, um, to overcome a lot of obstacles and to be, to be open and just happy, just free. And I was like, it felt so good and it felt so natural. And, you know, it, the session went on for an hour and a half and it was so much fun. I'm like, I want to do this again. And I know I'm probably can't capture lightning in a bottle, but I know the purpose and the direction of, of why I want to do these things. It's not just like, 
I'm gonna get my pictures done. It's gonna be fantastic. It's gonna be good. Everyone's gonna see all these photos of me. It's like, no, what it is is like, I, I experienced success. And it's not that like, well, we'll find out how the pictures look. There is that part of me that I'm like dying to know how these pictures are going to turn out. Um, but part of me, I like, I don't care. Um, the photographer, she said some of these turned out really good. I'm like, that's great. Um, and I, I am genuinely curious, but at the same time, I'm like, that's neither here nor there. The point is I, I did this. It was a personal success and triumph. And some other people might be like, well, everybody gets their photos taken. People get their picture taken all the time. No. To that I say, go fuck yourself. Because this was a personal victory for me uh, to overcome. And that's something that applies to a lot of people. But specifically in, um, I don't like to say trans community. But other trans people um, definitely need these, these overcoming goals. Because if not, we self-implode extremely easily on and we suffer in silence and wonder like what's wrong with me sweetheart there's nothing wrong with you you're beautiful okay if you're seeing this i want to tell you that you're loved and nobody can take that from you you build that up inside yourself. You build that from the foundation up. And that is what I did. That is the whole point that I've been talking for 36 minutes and 40 seconds on this. Is that you, you, you are the engineer. You are the, you are the carpenter. <laughs> you are the one that lives in this house that you built. It's all you. It's all you, sweetheart. Other people can help you along the way, but you are one that, are the one that turns the key and opens the door, okay? And that is what I did. And I know, and I know I'm not the first person to ever do this, but this was a big first for me, and that's the important issue right there. That's the big thing. So it was fantastic. Um, I was treated so so happily, and is that really right? Treated so happily. I was in heaven. It was so good. I didn't want it to end. I feel like I could have gone on like all day. It was so much fun. And laughing and talking with the photographer and they were giving me all the points because I didn't know what to do. So I was like, just tell me what to do. Um, you know, I don't think I ever want to be that person that comes in and makes the photographer feel bad. Like, no, I was treated really good. <laughs> Cry. Because I've always wanted this. Always wanted it. It's something I've always wanted, and I I did it. It makes me happy, but also at the same time, I think about all the times that I almost quit. If you know what I mean, that I almost didn't make it, and. I'm crying <laughs> to think about all the times I didn't I didn't I didn't think I was going to do it and then I also think about all the times that all the others that gave up they didn't make it so many so many die that you don't even know there's so many out there that don't make it my heart breaks for all of them. So this personal victory, like, something like this, where I wasn't just accepted, I accepted myself. This is for everyone that didn't make it. Whether it was suicide or murder. Every time they gave up, every tear, every tear that I have, I think of them. I had such a good time. I had such a good time. And I hope I hope these photos turned out good because 
Because I, I hope they show a good result. Because other than that, I just have my testimony. I just have my word of how everything went. So, you know, the photo shoot ended. And it was great. Um, it was a good feeling of just feeling natural. Like, you know, I didn't... <laughs> I didn't have to hide who I was. That would spend the big thing. It's just like, oh, you gotta hide who you are. No, in the studio when changing and whatnot, obviously I kept the bottom stuff on because I don't, I don't even like to see that. So I don't want anybody else to. But the photographer, you know, talking with her and here I am changing between outfits and this and that. It was, it was so open and welcoming and I've always wanted that. And I want to do more of this. I'm like, I want to go back to that little piece of heaven. And I, it won't be the same experience. But it will be like a continuation for me. To learn more about myself. And so I went through my work day. I was super excited about it. I got home. And then, you know, I was just... I was euphoric last night. I was so excited. Um, and learning how to do different poses and, and what, you know, different things, you know. Um, it was so much fun. I took away so much from it. There's more of my hair. There, let me get some hair back now that I've calmed down and I'm not blubbering like a baby anymore. You like this? This is color? You know, it's funny. This is actually my natural hair color. Um, cause it starts out blonde roots, turns brown, and then turns like an auburn, like strawberry blonde or red. So no highlights. It's my natural color, which is why I don't want to dye my hair because by the time my hair probably grows back out to this, I probably won't have any color anymore. Um, but anyways, fast forward to, um, Sunday morning, which was uh, just a few hours ago and I got a little something in the mail and I was like, what is this? And I was like, it's like written by hand. I can't re can't reveal the name. But anyways, I decided to open it up. And I'm sorry I ripped it. But I opened it. And it says... It says thank you. Thank you. It's got a little note in here, and I'll read it. I can stop bawling like a baby. It says, hello, Ivy. I get to call Ivy a lot, which is fine, but it is Ivy. Ann. It says, Thank you so much for booking your photo session here at Blank Blank Photography. I'll give them credit in my photos later. Um, but I don't want to say their name right now. We are really looking forward <laughs> to creating beautiful photos of you. And we'll see you. On Saturday, February 4th <laughs> at 8.30 a.m., which they had told me 8, but then they were telling me 8.30, but they're like, oh, we, we fixed it, so I did come at 8, but it says Lynette, Megan, and Alexa. <laughs> Is that line right there? We are really looking, we are really looking forward to creating beautiful photos of you. Sorry, my nose is leaking. I don't know. I might have some tissue paper right down. Sorry, my nose is leaking. <laughs> I don't care about the tears, but the end of the nose. Why the nose leaks, I don't know. Hopefully it'll stop. I don't know what to do about this leaking problem. I don't know. 
but they said, we are really looking forward to creating beautiful photos of you. Because I was thinking, like, they don't know me. They don't know what I've gone through. What, who I used to be. What I used to look like. And I'm like, for someone not to judge me. It means too much. It's a lot. It means so much to me. <laughs> Somebody would take the time to write this because it's written by hand. But they would take the time to write it about a total stranger. It's just like, do they know? Do they know my story? The truth was, they didn't have to. They just said, come on in. hardest part is just inviting myself to this. Then he wrote me a little thank you letter. And I think it might have arrived. Who knows when? I don't know. But reading this and receiving it after my photo shoot makes so much more sense. So, at some point, I'll see these photos. But... So, that's my little story. This That's just what's been going on with me. There's more. I really don't talk, like to talk about work much. At some point, I, I would like to talk about that more. Um, if you want to talk about writing and comic books and stuff um but that's something for another time love and relationships um i've had my my hits misses and losses i guess i guess you could say 